What's up, everybody? My name is Pat Walter, and we are going to talk about how to walk the talk. You know, sometimes in our Christian faith, we um, have seasons where it doesn't make sense. Um, and, and I think I've had that season, we've all had that season, or maybe you're entering that season. That's kind of who I want to talk to. Um, you know, obviously with the pandemic and everything else going on, like we all have questions or concerns or thoughts, or even some of people maybe are filled with hope or faith through the season. But one of the things that I've thought about a lot, and um, you know, if you look at the life of David, I love the life of David. I feel like sometimes I think we all kind of like the life of David, especially the the Goliath moments or these seasons where he's king or he does. David did some great things in the kingdom of God and in the nation of Israel. Uh, but one of the things I feel like relates the most to me with David is... David had the season where he's out in this field and he's a shepherd shepherding sheep and uh, he's just kind of minding his own business, honestly. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, the prophet uh, comes and he says, hey, uh, you know, Samuel's looking for the next king. And um, they, they, they finally bring David in from the field. They didn't even consider him, didn't even bring him in at first before the prophet Samuel was like, hey, where don't you have another son? And um, so he brings him in and then he anoints him the next king of Israel. Think about that moment, 17 year old boy being anointed the next king of Israel. Like that's kind of a big deal. Um, and then the and then the season after that, David is sent by his father uh, to go check on his brothers who are at war uh, in Israel. And David now is this, has this opportunity because he hears Goliath. And David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of the living God, right? Kind of has this gusto of like, hey, this is my God we're talking about, and he's defying him. And so we, we most of us know the story, probably all know the story of David and Goliath. Uh, even people with no idea who Jesus is or anything about the, the kingdom of God or the gospel of Jesus Christ know about David and Goliath because we use that now in sports analogies. You know, it's the David versus Goliath. So he has this moment, David defeats Goliath, cuts his head off, and he becomes like this warrior. And um, now David is now going out and killing uh, thousands and he's kind of like leading the army. And all of a sudden Saul gets jealous. And uh, let me backtrack for just a second. Before Saul gets jealous, David ends up marrying the king's daughter. Um, and so now David is in the kingdom. Um, David is married to the king's daughter. He is leading this army and everything looks good. I call it, he was sitting pretty, right? Like you're in the kingdom, married to the king's daughter. Like, bro, you are sitting pretty. And then all of a sudden in Saul's jealous rage, uh, he tries to kill David. And it just gets worse from there. Now he's being pursued by his father-in-law who loved him and, and invited him to his home and spent plenty of time in the king's court. He used to play the, the harp for Saul when he was uh, distraught or actually being attacked by, by a demon. Um, you know, he was well-loved in the kingdom. Everybody knew him in Israel. And, and all of a sudden, you're running for your life. Um, and he spent, you know, most scholars say 14 years running and hiding before he was ever pronounced the actual king. See, there's this season between anointing and appointing. You see, there's this moment where David is anointed the next king, but he had to go through a long series of preparation for the appointing time when he would actually become the king. You know, I think there's there's many young people out there. There's many just people out there, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe young spiritually where, where we feel like we have an anointing. We feel like we have a gift or we have a calling. All these different words that we use in, in our Christianese, right? Of, of this thing that we feel like we're called to do or unctioned or gifted in. But, but what we want, especially in our kind of microwave society, is we feel like because of this gift, because of this call, because of this anointing, that, that we should be appointed right away. We should be walking in it right away. But the truth is, it's in these seasons of uh, where character is built in caves, not in the comfort of castles. So what that means is God wants to, he cares more about what's inside of you and producing what's 
in you that you have the character to carry that anointing, to carry that gift, to carry that, that calling that he has for you. And it's not uh, that, that you're bad or wicked, but that's, it's a season of preparation, right? This is a season where, listen, David defined who he was in the cave season more than the kingdom season. So when David had the opportunity to kill Saul, even though he had the, we could have justified it. Listen, he, Saul's trying to kill him. He's just, you know, self-defense. You, you kill him, kill him. But David said, listen, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. You see, we have to understand that that's a powerful statement. We are quick to touch uh, the Lord's anointed with our tongue because we don't agree or we don't like or whatever it is. But David revealed his character in those moments. He revealed two times he had the opportunity uh, to kill him, and he didn't. Even though his guys are saying, listen, this is the Lord. This is the Lord giving you favor to kill him. And he's like, no, listen, I will not touch. The, the Lord anointed and appointed him. I will not be the one to take the, the right or the position for myself. But we are so quick to do that. But what God was doing was, was he was preparing David's internally so he wouldn't become Saul. See, what happened with Saul, Saul wasn't a bad leader at the beginning. He just didn't have the character to sustain the, the anointing on his life. So, so he had to go through hard seasons um, and, and eventually fell. Saul fell because he didn't have the character. David, God loved David so much and said, listen, I want you to succeed as a king. And so you need to develop the character internally through suffering and hardship and running for your life so that when you're the king, you will be a great king. And here we are thousands of years later talking about this King David. Obviously not perfect. Obviously sinned with Bathsheba. And I'm not saying that he was a perfect king, but he had this love for God that never went away. He always loved God. So sometimes, guys, here's my encouragement to you so that we can walk the talk, right? Is if you are in a season where you feel like there's something God showed you, something beautiful, some, something wonderful, maybe even a, a promise of God, but you are, if you feel like you're stuck in the season of in between where you're just, you don't quite get it, you don't understand, you're just trying to uh, do what he, you thought he called you to do or, or do what's in your heart, but God said, no, listen, there's some preparation that I need to do in your heart, in your mind, and in your life before that appointing season coming. So that anointing to appointing is a season of preparation. Because again, I'm going to say this, your character is built in caves, not in the comfort of castles. All, all of the great things were done in tough situations. So God is just preparing you for what he's called you to do later on. So again, this is Pat Walter. I'm with Deep and Wide Podcast. And here I am trying to give you the tools to walk the talk. So God bless you guys uh, and have a great, great day.